Hello and welcome to Cruising with Kenyo. Hello and welcome to Cruising with Kenyo. What's up, guys? It's Kenyo, and welcome to this episode of Cruising with Kenyo. We'll be right back after this sponsored segment. All right, what's up, you guys? This is uh, another episode, a new episode of Cruising with Kenya, the podcast where you drive around with me. And today we're talking about Samsung has made new, um, they've made new leaps with the with the um, solid state batteries. And um, I love I love um, battery research because it's fascinating to me. And what this signals to me is very honestly, you know, what most people already know, which is internal combustion cars, you know, engines, cars with engines, um, they're not going to be around for, for much longer because it just doesn't make sense on an efficiency level. Um, once we can really get some cool batteries going on and they can, they can really, um, be dispensing power, you know, at a good rate, why would we, you know, do all this stuff with fuel, and I know fuel's a big industry, and we'll probably still use fuel for a lot of things, like, you know, I'm talking about, um, you know, petroleum-based fuels, but we're not going to need them uh, in our cars, because, uh, you know, I was watching this one video, and I was talking about how not only are we going to be able to get batteries to be 10 times more powerful, but um, we don't need them to be 10 times more powerful, which means we can make them even smaller. So if Tesla needs 10% of the battery power that it already has, um, and people are already buying the cars, what do you think that's going to do with Tesla's ability to compete? It's going to make it... It's going to make it easy for them to um, really just show the competitive advantage. And it's good, because when you think about it, all we really want... All we really want um, is to be able to power the things that we want, um, power the things that we're doing. And if we can do that in a small um, space or a small device, why wouldn't we do that instead of, um, you know, going with gas? Um, and, you know, I'm really interested in, t- in the solid state batteries. I do a lot of research on different batteries. I was talking in the last episode, I talked a little bit about uh, bio batteries, how that's becoming... Um, you know, people are doing research in that, and I'm very interested in that, and I'd like to check that out, and, but, um, you know, I don't know where battery technology is going. I know that there's being, a, there's a lot of different advancements going on in a lot of different places, um, and I think that is super cool. I think however we, we, um, create these containers for storing energy, because that's what it is, you know, it's an efficient container. And they talk a lot about energy density, and um, there's different ways to improve energy density in different systems. What is energy density? I suggest you go Google it, because I could talk about it, but you'd probably get more just from Googling it. But it's basically saying, you know, how much of something, how much energy is stored in, you know, the mass of different substances, and, you know, how, um, and then there's the efficiency. It's like, okay, but how good are we at using that energy, you know, how you, how good are we at turning that energy into, um, cause that matters too. Um, and you know, right now gasoline engines make gasoline all pretty efficient, but you know, it's, I think at like 40% efficiency and, um, that doesn't really mean anything by itself, but in the context of its energy density, which is obviously really good comparative to other stuff that we use, which is why we use it, you know, it makes gasoline so efficient, but batteries, and batteries and gasoline aren't competing, I think that's one thing, they're not competing, it's just about the fact that if you can invent like a, and this is how I think about it, it's like if you invent a better water bottle, right, then people can be more free in the way that they do things. Batteries are energy bottles, and so is gasoline in a certain kind of way, Um, but um, batteries do not um, by themselves create energy, so they have to have energy deposited in them, and, you know, relative to gasoline, I mean, and gasoline is a deposit of energy that we use to do other things, um... So anyway, we're still going to need the energy. The batteries aren't going to create the energy for us, unlike, you know, gasoline. And gasoline is not creating energy. You know, we're using gasoline up, and we're trying to find more and more oil 
um, so that we can have more um, fuel. But, you know, right now, gasoline is relatively abundant. I really don't know how many years of gasoline we think we have, but I guess the Earth is pretty big, and they keep finding oil in different places, but it does take hundreds of, like, millions of years, I think. Again, my science on that aspect is not the greatest, but it takes hundreds of millions of years to make this stuff um, naturally. Um, that You know, gasoline is, it comes from oil deposits in the ground. So, so we're, it's not like, you know, it's not like any new ga gasolines are, are coming up in our time, you know. Um, anyway, so I don't, I don't really see them being competing because we'll still need to generate energy, so we'll still probably be generating energy from um, petroleum for a while. Hopefully, you know, we can have a lot of solar power, and solar power really depends on batteries as well because we have, have to be able to store this energy, and we're finally getting better at, and we're, I'm, I'm sure we're not even close, but we're finally getting better at making um, better batteries, which means we can store enough electricity, you know, can you imagine when we're going to be able to store enough electricity to drive our car for, you know, 10 days inside of something the size of, like, a tennis ball, that sounds, you know, really weird, but it's gonna happen, like, human beings, we're really not good when it comes to our relationship with time and understanding how things happen, you know, we didn't even have cars, um, you know, 300 years ago, I'm trying to make sure my math is on that, we were just inventing them, you know, people were just coming up with the technologies that would enable cars, and that was, you know, 300 years ago, so what's going to happen in another 300 years, you know, we're not talking about innovations inside of a category, we're talking about entirely new freaking categories, if you look at even just within the span of my lifetime, um, you know, memory storage has gone from, you know, what is it, you know, like 500 kilobytes to being a thing, to, you know, multiply that times 10, times 10, times 10, um, or even way more, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm not, and that's, and that's, and that's not even, multiply that times 100 times 100, and that's more of what we're doing right now, so if we can do 10,000x, in 10 years, you know, with, with a technology, I think we really need to look at how fast we can, we can change things, we can change things really fast, and I think that's what's going to happen, where, uh, you know, energy cores are going to be a thing, and your ability to fill them is going to be more fascinating, just like, you know, you don't worry about whether or not you can have a bank account, you're just trying to say, because it's infinite, it's like, I just want to fill it up as much as I can, um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so, Engines are going away. Cars will be not making any noise. And I think it's really only going to take one more gigantic, gigantic, and it's probably already happened, but it has to roll out to the public. One more one more leap forward in battery technology. Um, and that's going to completely do it. And I think um, there's really no, no, it's not, it's never too early to like be jumping on these kinds of trends as far as like, people thinking ahead, I think that's one thing that life will teach you, you know, nothing is going to be the same forever, and when change comes, um, the people that are most vulnerable are the people who have been the least pressured to innovate, and that can be anywhere from big businesses to employees of certain companies and certain industries, people become very relaxed, um, literally just due to, you know, a lack of continuing to locate new information and assimilate it into your daily life, and I, I think you can, you, you can't, you can't leave school, you know, you gotta be in school forever, you gotta be always learning, and, um, so yeah, looking at, looking at your life and saying, hey, if I drive a regular car, and these engines aren't gonna be things anymore, what does that mean? Um, a lot of different things, a lot, a lot of different things, I think, we're not going to just, we are just going to stop using engines, but I mean, whether that's, you know, recycling them for, for scrap metal, whether, you know, someone might, might, if you can innovate on fuel enough, if you can innovate on fuel enough, there might, um, 
Because that's the thing also. You know, batteries are getting better, but that doesn't mean that we can't make a discovery in fuel that helps us to understand how that's going to continue to be used. And then I, I think, um, yeah, there's so there's a lot of things. It's just putting the information out there so that you can take the time to think about it. You know, what is going to go on? Um, what could I change? You know, if you're, you're a chemist and you can innovate on fuel, if you're an engineer, you might even be able to innovate on engine design. I think we take for granted engine design. We think that because engines have been designed a certain kind of way, these are very recent designs. Most, most, you know, the current, the current most popular engine designs, they're very recent, modified, you know, daily by people who work inside of these industries. People are designing new engines all the time. Um, so who knows, someone might come up with a new engine design where you only need one cup of gasoline and, um, you know, it creates such a crazy explosion that, uh, you know, it charges up your battery for three days. And so people still go, um, get gasoline, but they get it in like a, (laughs) people get gasoline in like a Sprite can, you know, they get like six, six packs from from uh, their grocery store, and they only need to put one can in their car, and then that that, that creates a, a low-level fusion reaction that, that turns into, you know, enough power for, for seven days, uh, you know, because, anyway, um, I mean, that's how the innovation would have to go if we were gonna, if it was gonna go into, because we're still talking about just making an explosion from a, a thing. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot I don't really understand with, um, fusion stuff. Because I'm like, yo, if you can make a fusion reaction from anything, then I guess there wouldn't really be an, or from any molecule, which I'm sure is not true. I'm sure there's a certain type of thing, but I don't know if that has anything to do with petroleum. I guess it would be more of like a, um, fusion is hydrogen, right? I don't know the molecules inside of gasoline. So, anyway, I don't think we'll need gasoline to do fusion. But maybe, 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 maybe we use, um, maybe we start using gasoline. I'm just, I'm doing this because I want, want people, I'm, I like iterating on stuff and being like, especially in science, there's so, the, that's the cool thing about science. The amount of innovations are limitless. We could make some sort of hydraulic system that uses petroleum in order to increase pressure in some new fluid that retains heat um, so that once it's expanded, the pressure in the system is able to sustain for, you know, two days until the heat is extracted. You know, if we get some sort of super water, you know, because I know water retains heat anyway. So there's a bunch of different stuff that could that could come up. And... Um, it's just like, why not? Why not take a look at the uh, the sciences and see what see what you can add to them? So I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen. Not to mention, you know, if we get these 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 new generations solid state batteries, um, which what that means. Let me try to break that down a little bit so that I'm at least adding some in because we have like solid state drives. Like if you know how hard drives work in computers, they spin. Um, but then they make, um, and again, if I say anything incorrect, just go ahead and shoot me an email, but, um, they have new hard drives that they don't need to spin, um, and they can just transfer the information without as many moving parts, and from what I understand about, um, these new batteries is that, well, okay, there's a lot that I don't understand, but basically the way that they structure them makes it safer and makes it so that the they can get more of these little ions to move back and forth. Um, what I know about um, batteries is essentially not a lot, but uh, what I do know about them is that um, you're basically... Uh, the way electricity works anyway is that you're, you're moving electrons, right? So you send the electrons um, through this system and then they end up on the other side of the system. So it's like there's kind of like two tanks and when something moves, one, they get pulled 
because of the um, charge in the system. So when they get pulled through the system, when these atoms run through the system, I think about it as like a bunch of balls flying down a tube, and then there's like a little fan um, that's getting hit. It's like, let's say you, you have your fan. You're running through this, you're running through this um, thing or whatever, and then you pick up, uh, I mean, sorry, <laughs> the balls are going through this tube, and they run, and they slap this this fan, and then the fan starts spinning, that's essentially what's happening, like, um, you know, these, these electrons are running through your, your little, your, your appliances, and they're slapping them on, they're, they're doing the work, they, they're, they're radiating the, the electrons in the, in the, uh, microwave, they're jumping out of the coils on your heater and your stove, you know, um, and then they're, anyway, that was probably not a helpful analysis for most people. But uh, that, that's what I wanted to talk about in this cruising with Kenyo. Um, new batteries from Samsung are gonna knock out this. Um, are gonna knock out our need for for internal combustion uh, engines pretty soon, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Anyway, you guys hit me up if you are thinking about anything else interesting. Um, catch me on the next Cruising with Kenyo. Hit me up at Kenyo HQ on everything. Send me an email, science ideas, science clarifications. Um, send that to me at Kenyo at project4.tv. Um, yeah, and then continue to just have a, an excellently blessed day. I'll talk to you later.